Where is he? I'm not. Oh boy. This is amazing. You just killed the biggest buck of your life, Tommy. How about that? <laughs> Thomas and I have known each other for a long time, and we're great buddies. We met in the fishing industry, but we both had a passion to hunt. So we've always had these grand plans to hunt together any state, anywhere, anytime, but it's never really come to fruition. Last year, we hit his home state of Iowa. This year, we're on to Oklahoma. To switch things up a little this year, I wanted to bring my son Tommy along. He's been a budding hunter, uh, has done very well. We lived in Alabama for five years. He killed his first deer. Uh, he killed seven deer and six turkeys while we were there, had a great time, but he still didn't have that wall hanger buck. This was my first traveling hunt, and um, I'd never been to the state of Oklahoma, so I was not sure what to expect. Um, once I got the news that Dad told me that we were going to Oklahoma, I was unsure because I knew that Oklahoma was mostly covered in Great Plains. Well, the terrain in Oklahoma was open, no trees at all, and uh, Dad actually brought a lone wolf tree stand. <laughs> And then as soon as we got out in the plains, I was like, man, we did not need that tree stand at all. I can see why he didn't. Kevin told us not to bring it. And Thomas carries way too much gear. <laughs> but if I have it. But if you, if you need it, he's got it. There's no doubt about it. The man is well prepared. Now, when I got here, I'm like, where are the trees? Because I have a tree stand pack that Kevin told me to not bring and I see some telephone poles, and then there's this big box car right behind me here. I, I, I set them at the box car. Now, it is a crazy idea, but it, you know, it's one of those situations that it, it's so crazy it might work. I've done some crazy things for a deer before, but this might be one of the craziest things I've ever done. Tommy and I are in Oklahoma. Wide open spaces, unbelievably beautiful place. If you've never been here, you're missing some of them most beautiful parts of whitetail country and we're sitting on a box car that's right we have climbed up on top of a box car overlooking a mesquite thicket anyway we think that there's deer bedded in here and this is an elevated position it's not necessarily perfect but if there are deer indeed in this little thicket here and they get up to feed we're going to be here to watch them do it about 10 10 or 15 minutes later this Buck that only has one beam and broke all of his points off. Comes out, he comes out from the long grass that's over there. I was questioning if I wanted to shoot him. His rack was not the best, but like that body was big. We got a little bit of footage of this deer and it was one that Tommy elected to pass, had a broken beam. Uh, in fact, he'd broken every point that he had. Had the potential to be big, but we decided to let him go. As soon as we started, we got a text from Kevin saying that he sees a big one bedded down and he's coming to get us. It's game on. We climbed off of the box car, hopped in Kevin's truck, and we ran about a mile down the road. And getting the details from Kevin while we're in the truck that, hey, there is a nice buck bedded over here. If we can get into position, Tommy can make it. Breathing because you're going to get a good look at this thing, okay? And he's looking away. He is a good deer. I'm telling you right now, he's every bit as good as that one I shot. Every bit. Think it's that one? I think it was. Bed it down, dude. So when you get out, do not slam the door, and we're just gonna ease him. Like take him tri his tripod, right? You just take only your tripod, get it set up to take a seated shot.
Kevin uh, drives us to this um, field, and then uh, and then over that over this ridge, and then you could see a long ways, and that's where he was bedding. So we kind so we moved out there quietly. We moved across the field, and then we got to this ridge that was overlooking everything, and I had a hard time. I. Honestly, I was kind of a jerk to Tommy. I'm not gonna lie. I was, I was, I was in his ear the whole time, telling him, "Calm down, calm down." And at one point, I had to look him right in the eyes and just say, "Hey, you gotta cut it out." <laughs> and you know what? The kid listens, and that's how he learned to be a good hunter, just like his dad. He's up, he's up, he's up. He's down. Oh my gosh. I think you got him. I think you got him. He calmed down. Thomas, behind the camera, says he stood up. He stood up. And it wasn't three seconds later that that buck was laying back down in his bed. Tommy had made the shot. So after I shot him, I I think I drilled him because um, I think that, that red dot was uh, on the harp and then I heard you guys chatting back there and I was like, oh no, did I miss? <laughs> and I just blew the biggest buck of my lifetime. Dad and Kevin looked at the footage and it was a perfect shot and he dropped dead in his tracks. The man behind the camera made this happen. My buddy Kevin, we've, we've been on a lot of outings together and today we were set up in another spot, a very unique spot, sitting on top of a box car saw a decent buck come in that Tommy passed on. The second buck he passed today, and he said, I gotta come get you. I found a big buck bedded, and so we did. We got together, we got down. Tommy walked in, he crawled in, and made a perfect shot. I don't know what to say, I'm speechless right now. We got to this tree, and I had a hard time finding him, and then I saw him once, and then I lost him, and then I saw him again, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's a big rack. This this uh, this gun was a big part of that. That's a 6.5 Creedmoor with an Eliminator 3 from Burris on it. We're able to range the deer, get the exact yardage, and it places the bead where it needs to go. That's critical in this part of the country. We're in southwest Oklahoma, one of the most beautiful parts of the whitetail country that you didn't know was awesome. But you got to be able to reach out there. Shh, don't tell them. <laughs> you got to be able to reach out there and touch them. It's mesquite country. You got to have a, a round that'll go a long ways, shoot flat, and when it does hit them, put them right to the ground. Oh yeah. Now you have to play cameraman. Oh well. I think he's on the next tree. I think he's by that tree up there. Yeah, he's right up there in that blonde spot. Tell me your power range is up. So, yeah. oh, Where is he? I'm not Oh boy. No, that's a 10 pointer. Yeah, How about that? It's not too bad. The drag. But walking walking up to his buck, uh, and I now I, I'm behind the camera now. I'm holding it and, and watching a father and son, you know, come upon a moment that they've been they've been waiting for this for a year because before Thomas and I left Iowa, we had already decided, okay, it's settled, you're coming to Oklahoma. Over the counter tags, 
you're gonna hunt my home state. And to see that pay off, there's nothing better. Man, this is a nice spot. Kevin got me on the on the deer and I had a hard time finding him. And then I see then I see his rack and I was like, oh my gosh, it's a nice deer. And then um and then I lost him and then we had to get him again and then he stood up while I was on him and then <clears throat> he turned broadside and then boom. How far did he go? Zero feet. Well, probably at least, at least one foot down to the ground. Yeah. You know, there's been no greater joy as a father to watch my children grow up hunting turkeys and deer. And, you know, both my son and daughter have killed uh, several each, over a half dozen turkeys and half dozen deer each. And this is the biggest one for Tommy yet. He's been snake bitten over the years uh, with shooting a, a big deer that only had half a rack or, or not being able to close the deal. And he has a lot of stick to itiveness, so he stuck by me even when he didn't want to go and I had to roll him out of bed early this morning to get up but I'm telling you right now I say it every time we're sitting behind the deer as a family if you're not taking your kids hunting you're missing some of the best joy as a father or a mother uh, that you can have and this is uh, the pinnacle of Tommy's career right now and I can't tell you how much fun it was to watch him make a 300 yard shot on his biggest deer ever on video and he made a perfect shot so buddy I'm real proud of you you did good you have a long drag back. Kevin and I are going to sit down and uh, have it. So after we gutted the deer, um, Dad was doing the good old deer pack. And on the way there, I thought, man, Oklahoma's a great place. It really blew me away. It was either going to be a huge success or it could also be a huge failure. It was kind of either or. But it was a definite success. And I was happy with that buck.